which you're, you're all familiar with my work, I know. This is an acrylic on canvas, although it doesn't look like it's on canvas. Uh, this is, uh, when I work, I never really know what I'm going to do to start with. I never have, I, I never have a clear-cut plan. Uh, I just make a mark. It's arbitrary, and it builds from there. I just build on each one, and it becomes a painting by magic. Uh, it's all intuitive, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. There are a lot of canvases that turn out. Uh, it's coated with an acrylic glaze afterwards. The other one down on the other end here actually had a little bit of inspiration in my head when I did it, and that was from my European trips uh, with all the cathedrals and uh, stained glass, and that just was just a little bit in the back of my head as I was painting it. Uh, that one, I, I started with just the black lines and colorized behind it with an airbrush, and again, coated. That's on canvas as well. Uh, my major influences were the abstract expressionists of the 50s, by and large, uh, with, uh, obviously, you know Pollock. But, um, Paul Clay is another one, Chagall is another one, a number of artists uh, of the Impressionist period as well have kicked me off. So that's my portion. Wayne, did you want to say a few things about yours? No. I <laughs> <laughs> um, the piece I entered is a portrait. I don't normally do portraits, but, um, well, I must say, Diana Williams is an inspiration to me. You know, the her stuff. And plus, when you have, like, your wife bugging you to do a portrait of your granddaughter, you end up doing a portrait of your granddaughter. But normally I do um, more off-the-wall stuff, you know, just figments of my imagination, and just let it run wild from there. Uh, I work in oils on canvas all the time there. And I also, most of you know, I do caricatures a lot, too, with festivals and stuff. And, you know, for graduations, weddings, all that. And so that takes up a big portion of the time that I end up drawing and stuff. And just pump a lot of it into that and have fun doing it. And, um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to Larry Mallory. You know, he always gives his glory to God, and that's what I give my talent, my glory to God for giving me the talent to do it. So. Alan Rush, would you like to say a few words? Sure that has some relevancy to either myself personally or the area that, that we all live in, uh, which is central uh, Pennsylvania and, uh, and Johnstown in particular. And I came across this, uh, this little piece of information not too long ago that uh, the area that we all live in has the, um, the highest rainfall. Uh, of most of this country that we live in. So why not do a painting about, about a rainfall? And that's what I did right here. Um, there's a couple of things about, about my work that, uh, that I can talk about. And what, what I try to do, as, as you all can see in this particular painting, is to bring, bring some like intrigue into the painting itself and by that I mean I chose not to put faces on these people so these are faceless people standing in um, a rainfall on a street corner uh, perhaps it's uh, Main Street and the intersection of Franklin um, <laughs> where there's a traffic light so the these people are all there and uh, wondering when that traffic light is going to change to green. And I'm sure we've all gone through a situation like that and we can, we can all relate to the idea behind the painting. So, as I mentioned, this is what I try to do with uh, the beginnings of uh, the work that I do. I try and come up with a concept that, that I can relate to and hopefully um, the viewers who are looking at the work can relate to it as well. I have a second painting that's on the back wall over there that 
if you all get a chance to walk around later, you can take a look at it. It's, uh, the theme of, of that second painting has to do with the um, Ukraine war. And it's something that when it first began happening, the event began happening, I had this strong feeling that I'd like to do something that uh, incorporated some type of visual empathy with that war. So that painting is really all about uh, Ukraine refu refugees uh, crossing the border, perhaps into Poland, and leaving their homes and the sadness that these people are having as a result of this war. And uh, one of the little inserts that I placed into the bottom section of that painting is a painting that was uh, actually inspired by um, one of my painting mentors. His name is uh, Mark Chagall, and I've always loved his work because he is a very inspirational painter and uh, has uh, a connection with the people of the region that he came from. And I did a little research on his background and found out that he actually was born and raised on the border of U Ukraine in a country called Belarus. And so when I found that out, I decided that I was going to use his style to create that second portion of this uh, refugee exodus. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, once again, it's, uh, it's another, it's another um, method of what I Another process that I put into the the uh, the idea that comes to me to create my work. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the show and enjoy the uh, next uh, speaker that comes on up. And, and thanks for hearing me. Somebody said to me, it's a portrait. You're going to put it in a show? And I said, yeah. And they said, but it's so personal. And I said, but it's a painting. <laughs> so I have a, a huge desire to paint landscapes and birds and just flowers and still life. I, I love every genre of painting. I've even done some abstract. But faces call me. And I mean, they literally, I'll, I'll have something planned. I'll have a still life or something that I'll even have maybe my sketches started. And then that portrait will show up. And everything I look at is a portrait already. I mean, I really... You know, when I'm taking pictures of my grandchildren, or even just when I look out at your faces, I think, what a character, what a beautiful vision. And of course, light is the most important thing for me. I try to paint light, and then it ends up being a portrait. And when I do that, it sort of adds that spirit and that personality, and that's, that's about the only thing I can tell you about. If, if I was going to tell you about my journey in art, we'd be talking about my health all night long. <laughs> <laughs> that's a problem. Because I actually took a long, long time developing my painting process to fit my heart and pain issues. I, I actually, when I teach my class, I, they'll ask me a lot of questions about how did you learn how to do this, and I will say, well, I, I only can spend so much time painting because then 
I start to hurt too much or maybe I'll have a sudden migraine and I can't see anything or something like that. And so I, I developed this way of painting and putting the paint on. There's, I'm going to briefly tell you there's something called direct and indirect painting. And as you're all artists, you probably know that. With a, if somebody's painting a direct painting in a portrait, they mix all their color strings and they put that brush in there and they put that color there and then they clean that brush off and put that color there. I don't even have time or energy to mix all those paints. <laughs> and so I developed a process whereby I work on this today, and that tomorrow, and if I only have a half an hour, I can go in and sit down and do this much of it. And, and it would be take me forever to explain that to you. So all I can tell you is um, one of the most important things to me in my art journey is that when I was young and I had the tendency to draw, I'm, I'm not complaining, but nobody encouraged me. So I grew up thinking that what I did must be a real waste of time. And whenever I finally started, my husband encouraged me whenever my, I had this heart surgery. And whenever I started showing, everybody encouraged me. And I started believing in myself. And so I tried to pass that forward. And, and I, whenever I see a young person and they're observing or whatever, and I'll try to talk to them and see what I can hear in their, in their desires for art. And, and I, my one little granddaughter was standing looking at a painting that I had in the, where I, where I throw these things on the walls of my house. And, she was seven and she said, Grandma, when I look at that, it looks like water. But when I'm up here, it's just white paint. <laughs> you ought to see what that girl's doing now. So I'm very grateful for all of you who have encouraged me. And I'm very grateful that God has allowed me to spend my elderly years doing this. So thanks a lot. Thank you. saying anything in particular, but it's just like, I trust you. And when I look at them, I'll get inspired, like, that's the same dog, it's one dog, three different poses of the same dog. And it's painted. And I thought I was supposed to tell you how I do this process in Photoshop and in Corel Painter. So I had this little PowerPoint thingy prepared here, I call it how I did it. And uh, if anybody is interested in looking at it, just come and see me and I'll let you see what the process is to create that painted look on your photographs. 
Um, the other one is um, just a fair naked dog that I put a lot of uh, gears and gadgets on to make it look like a punk dog. Uh, <laughs> that's fun. But um, like I said, my, my journey is I'm, I'm trying to get back to the artwork. And it's just not working out. I went out and I bought $100 worth of acrylic paints and got a canvas out and started to do a painting of a water lily and I threw it in the trash, picked up the camera again. So I've still got to talk myself into that. So um, if anybody's interested, come talk to me. That will conclude our program for this evening. And thank you all for coming to the reception. It's always great to see you all. And uh, hopefully we'll be together again here in the fall. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.